Shruti, you can start. Okay, so good afternoon, uh, learners and everyone. Uh, today we have a session on uh, the uh, aspects of soil. So it is called as Basics of Soil Science, wherein we'll be discussing about uh, the various components of soil. And uh, also we'll be looking at a sustainable way of management of soil. Uh, so this is the brief outline of the uh, session today. So we'll be dealing with what is the concept and what are the components and other things. So uh, we all are very familiar with this term, which is called as soil. Basically, uh, it is the third component of uh, basic component of nature. Uh, the first two are air and water. So the third very important component of uh, 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 nature. And uh, we all know that it is an important uh, it is an important uh, uh, compartment of nature because it is able to sustain and it is able to give a living a habitat to all the terrestrial uh, ecosystems. So there are different uh, attributes and different characteristics of soil. Uh, we usually uh, you know, define it as uh, a body of mineral and organic constituents wherein it has different horizons or each horizon will have different depths. And also the material which is uh, in, into these horizons are uh, differentiated in terms of their uh, physical characteristics, their chemical characteristics, biological and their morphological characteristics. So from the point of uh, agriculture, uh, the soil is usually defined as a dynamic natural body where a layer of unconsolidated particles are formed because of pedogenic processes. And uh, these processes are comprised uh, due before the weathering of the rocks uh, and after the weathering of the rocks. And thus it forms a medium for the plant growth. So it is an interface between uh, the atmosphere and the lithosphere. And uh, the soil, obviously, now we can understand that it is a multi-phase system. So in this multi-phase system, we have minerals, we have uh, roots, we have uh, uh, water, gases, and mo most importantly, organic matter. So if there is a weathering of rock, and uh, uh, after the weathering of the rock, we don't have organic matter, which means that... Uh, which means that it has, it does not have uh, the composition of soil. So uh, how does the uh, soil form and how, what are the, its different layers? Before that, we have to understand that uh, when we talk about soil for different people and then for different domains, it will uh, have a different connotation. So for example, a geologist will look at the soil in a different way and hydrologist will look at it in a different way and an engineer will look into, uh, it's, into it in a different because, way because of the different uh, purposes it has to them. So uh, how does the soil form? How it is formed? So uh, basically, uh, there are uh, different uh, processes. The basic is uh, the basic process is that there is a pa parent material which is the rock and because of the weathering uh, which can be in situ weathering and uh, weathering is in situ so because of the weathering these uh, rock ma materials are uh, broken down or uh, disintegrated into various smaller uh, segments uh, which are called as regoliths so into different fragments uh, they are being broken up or Maybe they are also being transported through different geological agents from one place to the other. So uh, because of which, uh, if uh, uh, they are being transported from one place to the other, so then they become uh, unconsolidated. And if the weathering is uh, in situ, it is happening, uh, they are giving rise to consolidated particles. So upon which uh, there is uh, the action of different uh, agents and then, uh, coupled with the uh, organic matter and uh, after uh, it, it becomes the soil. So the weathering of the rocks, different uh, physical and chemical processes are there, different geological agents are there. Then the role of uh, climatic factors, precipitation, temperature, the role of biota, the role of topography, and also the role of 
time is there which is very important all of them are very important factors for the uh, uh, parent material to combine with organic matter and then form the soil so uh, if you can see it here these are the factors so climate mostly precipitation and temperature then what type of uh, parent material it is what type of rock it is whether it is igneous or whether it is sedimentary will also decide what type of soil is it is going to form then uh, the role of topography is very important if it is a, a steep slope or so it will uh, enhance the weathering it, it will enhance the erosional uh, processes and therefore uh, the formation and the rate of formation of soil will be uh, decided as per the topography of the area then the role of biota is very important because uh, how the animals uh, the microorganisms are there which are very crucial for the formation of the uh, soil and of course time that uh, it plays a very important role because the formation of soil takes a very long time uh, to form so uh, that is how the soil is formed and when the soil is formed it is uh, arranged in different layers or it is called as horizons during its formation so the uh, arrangement of different layers uh, into the formation is called as the soil profile so the soil profile is um, so the soil profile is something which is uh, there is a vertical section of the soil and uh, because of its color because of its texture because of its uh, differentiation into different uh, layers the uh, profile is uh, uh, you know identified so the role of soil and uh, if the, the soil is different in, in its structure or thickness or color or chemical composition is easily uh, determined through the soil profile so if you can see it here uh, there is a, a different there are different layers into it so usually uh, it is divided as o a e b c and r so o horizon is the uh, uppermost horizon uh, usually uh, it is composed of the litter and uh, the uh, organic matter and also partially uh, the partially decomposed organic matter so uh, then we have the a horizon which is also called as the top soil so uh, it contains a lot of uh, humus which are uh, formed because of humification and uh, when we talk about uh, the o horizon it is the uh, o o and the a horizon it is basically the uh, soil organic matter which are into different stages of decomposition so after the uh, o and a horizon we have the e horizon so uh, if you can see it here sorry so this is the uh, e horizon here so uh, if into the e horizon this is called as the zone of leaching because uh, the so soluble minerals they are uh, it can contain the soluble minerals and uh, through which the uh, water along with the soluble minerals goes down so then beyond it is the subsoil d horizon where uh, it contains a little bit of uh, water and this horizon is coarser because uh, it is not subjected to intensive uh, you know intensive uh, weathering so because of which uh, it is uh, usually it contains the coarser uh, uh, grains so if you go back if we can go back here so this is then this is the parent material so here this is the description so the o horizon is the upper layer of the top soil uh, dried leaves dead leaves organic matter is there then we have the a horizon the e horizon which is composed of the nutrients and uh, nutrients are there uh, leach from the o and a horizon so if you can see it here from this layer from the top layer whatever minerals are being leached down they are present in this e horizon and whatever is being leached on then again goes to the b horizon so the b horizon uh, has will be having lesser amount of humus and uh, more amount of soluble minerals organic matter 
and it has a higher water retention uh, capacity than the top soil and uh, the particles are more uh, finer so the clay soil is there then the sea horizon is the uh, layer which is devoid of any organic matter so uh, the parent material which is there is there and the uh, r horizon which contains different uh, layers of bedrock so then uh, with this we uh, come to uh, a classification of the soil components and the soil uh, structure so an average uh, soil composition which will be there so usually four major uh, components are there but before that we will uh, look into uh, a physical uh, point of view so the soil will have a solid phase it will also have a liquid phase and it will have a gaseous phase so for the solid phase we have inorganic constituents uh, for example your primary minerals your secondary minerals which are there uh, and also the organic uh, content which is the humus then from the uh, in the liquid phase we have water we have salts so a lot of cations and anions are there which form the macro and micronutrients and in the gaseous phase we have uh, soil air so if we talk about the soil forming components basically we have four uh, it is divided into four components one is the mineral matter then we have the soil organic matter then we have air and then we have water so mineral matter constitutes about 40 to 60% soil organic matter is approximately 5% and air is 20 to 50% whereas water is 10 to 25% so uh, mineral matter uh, is derived from the weathered rock and it is uh, something which is uh consisting of different types of uh, uh, different particles of different sizes so maybe it can range from boulders it can uh, to uh, smallest and finest particle which is the clay so uh, the soil uh, which is uh, there it consists of different uh, sizes of uh, particles uh, predominantly clay silt and sand so when we uh, say that uh, um, there is a proportion of clay or there is a proportion of clay and silt or sand that means uh, what is the relative uh, proportion of uh, these uh, the sizes of these minerals so that precisely determines what the texture of the soil is so when we say texture it means what is the relative proportion of sand or silt or uh, clay in a soil and the structure of the soil when we say it means how the these uh, grains are uh placed spatially or how these grains are uh, arranged spatially into the structure so maybe if it can be a single grain and it can be a clumsy way of uh, arrange, uh, arrangement of these grains so that is the uh, structure but the texture of the soil refers to va uh, variation in the size of these uh, particles so uh, mineral is one important thing air and water and soil organic matter is a very crucial uh, aspect so uh, when we say soil organic matter it means what is the organic com component of the soil so what is the uh, organic matter within that soil uh, that is the soil organic matter so uh, from the debris of the green plants or uh, the mineral residues or excreta so there are three primary parts one is the uh, small plant residues then we have the decomposing organic matter and the stable organic matter so uh, they can these components can be variable in proportion and they can have different stages then uh, the plant residue which is there on the soil uh, surface like leaves or manure or crop residues they are not considered as the soil organic matter because and uh, they are usually removed from the soil samples uh, while we are analyzing so during the decomposition two types of things are happening two different uh, two important processes are happening one is the mineralization the second one is the immobilization so in mineralization what happens that uh, essential elements they are converted uh, uh during the decomposition the essential elements are converted 
into inorganic form from the uh, from the organic form so uh, uh, the organic matter gets converted into inorganic form which is called as the mineralization now when the mineralization is happening what happens that sometimes the remainder which is uh, uh, is there uh, which is remaining as a substrate may be used up by the microorganisms for their uh, in their cell uh, substances so with the substrate certain important essential nutrients also get locked up uh, into their in the uh, microorganisms uh, biomass so uh, for example uh, sodium uh, sorry for example nitrogen or phosphorus or sulfur they might be locked up into the uh, into this uh, with this process so what will happen that the incorporation uh, for uh, when it is incorporated the minerals are locked up and it will not be available for their growth so this process is called as the immob immobilization so if the immobilization is uh, taking place or the mineralization is taking place it depends upon the c is to n ratio so if c is to n ratio is greater than 20 uh, it will uh, have higher uh, microbial biomass so uh, net imm immobilization will take place whereas if the c is to n ratio is less than tw uh, 20 so net uh, mineralization will take place so uh, soil organic matter obviously it very important because it helps to build up the loose soil structure with pores and when this is happening so easier root penetration will take place aeration will be better water infiltration will be better now the larger particles will act as a sponge so what will happen the water retention capacity will be enhanced and if the smaller particles are there it will act as a uh, it helps to uh, act uh, make the smaller particles act as glue so uh, therefore uh, uh, it improves the soil structure then it have uh, it uh, helps the soil organisms uh, as a habitat uh, retains the nutrients and also acts as a buffering uh, action uh, it also uh, has a buffering action because the higher amount of uh, soil organic matter uh, is helpful because it leads to uh, less uh, acidity uh, of the soil so when we talk about the soil organic matter the soil organisms are important because they are the uh, uh, biota below the ground surface so a uh, lot of uh, organisms like your uh, Uh, bacteria or fungi protozoans all of these uh, constitute the soil biota they are also important because they are the chief uh, you know com uh, chief ag agents of decompositions uh, of organic matter in the soil so they produce humus and uh, with uh, hu humus production they mix uh, the humus with soil particles they can make tunnels to facilitate deeper rooting and uh, the nutrient release from mineral particles particle is attributed to them so uh, it is important now the um, uh, when we talk about soil fertility and when we talk about uh, the soil management the first uh, important thing is to know what are the nutrients in the soil so basically we have uh, um, it is divided into two categories one is the macronutrients the other one is the micronutrients so uh, there are 17 elements uh, which the green plants uh, cannot grow normally and reproduce so uh, their basis of their concentration if it is uh, approximately 1000 mg per kg it is macronutrient so carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen phosphorus sulfur calcium magnesium potassium and chlorine they are uh, uh, categorized as macronutrients whereas iron manganese zinc copper boron and nickel with the concentration which is less than 100 mg per kg is your micronutrient so uh, carbon hydrogen and oxygen they are usually uh, uh, supplied as uh, carbon dioxide and water so carbon dioxide and water is abundant in uh, nature whereas uh, chlorine is also abundant and uh very less mobile so the nutrient status uh what the nutrient status of the soil is is uh usually uh 
an indicator of what the fertility of the soil is. So we can say that uh, the soil fertility is a connotation of the nutrient status or what is the ability of the soil to supply nutrients. So if favorable environmental conditions are there and what is the soil able to produce nutrient, so that is the soil fertil uh, fertility. And uh, the fertility is required to ensure and maintain that the uh, plant growth or the yield or uh, moisture is maintained. So one uh, indicator of the uh, soil fat fertility is uh, the land productivity, which in turn is uh, uh, governed by uh, factors like uh, what is the climate, what is the genetic potential of the crop and what are the pests or what can be the possible diseases. So uh, if the soil is able to function within ecosystem boundaries uh, and sustain biological productivity, the quality is also maintained and animal and plant health is uh, promoted, then we can uh, say that the quality of the soil is uh, uh, the term which is uh, uh, given is the soil quality. So basically, uh, soil quality is uh, something when we uh, are specifying the soil attributes in a comprehensive way. So uh, if the soil is able to function within ecosystem boundaries, that is your soil quality. Now, the soil quality is uh, usually uh, experienced uh, directly or indirectly. The manifestations are whether it is uh, uh, able to... Uh, uh, support the diversity of natural ecosystem or not. So uh, what is the diversity of the natural ecosystem? What is the health of the natural ecosystem? Then what are the uh, crops which are grown? What are the quality? What is the quantity? What is the runoff? And what are the what is the status of the gases which are absorbed or leaked from the soil? So the quality of the soil will also uh, depend on it's uh, uh, the soil uh, use and whether uh, it is fit for uh, that use or function not or not. If the soil is not fit for a particular use or if it is fit for a particular use in a uh, limited way. So all these factors uh, will uh, be uh, an indicator of the soil quality. So which in turn uh, says that whether that uh, land, uh, the land use capability of that particular uh, area is assessed or not. So uh, when we were in the last class, if you remember, if we were talking about the land evaluation, we, we were discussing as to uh, uh, if the land is uh, classified or if the land is evaluated as per its uh, suitability for various uses or not. So uh, if the land, uh, if the soil is there, its fitness is there. So accordingly, we can assess it and we can uh, evaluate the land. Now, soil, soil quality, if there is a contaminated land, it becomes more important because different activities are also going on. So in the areas where rural or urban development is going on, different uh, causes can be there because uh, different causes can be there where the soil contamination can take place. So there can be mining activities because of industrial activities or maybe the uh, um, urban setup uh, or the agricultural forestry or uh, or horticulture uses. Apart from it, uh, when we say that uh, soil quality can be uh, there because of different reasons, there is a uh, also a, a wider spectrum. So uh, the concept of soil becomes uh, wider, and uh, it it is a integrated way of how the social, cultural, economical, or biophysical uh, properties have to be also looked upon. So, uh, therefore, the management practices uh, which are uh, uh, there has to has to incorporate all these different aspects as well. So then we uh, talk about the management of soil quality. Now uh, we have uh, spoken. We have talked about the uh, soil, uh, uh, you know, evaluation. How the soil uh, profile is there. How the different. So how to manage the soil quality because uh, initially uh, soil fertility was uh, an, uh, something which was being practiced by our uh, in the conventional methods there were a lot of methods which were uh, 
giving uh, you know sustenance to the soil this, uh, there was a sustainability uh, in the method of uh, agriculture but uh, with the advancing population with the uh, advancing population and pressure on the land the sustainability uh, uh, aspect is a little under threat so what is the ability of soil to sustain the plant growth and optimize crop yield and uh, through organic or inorganic fertilizers so an integrated soil fertility management approach is required where uh, the crop production is higher and also the soil nutrients are uh, preserved so the mining of nutrient has to be uh, minimized and the degradation uh, aspect has to be also looked upon so there has to be a long term strategy uh, which will aim at reducing the loss of nutrient and also the build up of soil fertility so if the soil is continuously uh, continuously nourished and uh, the soil fertility is maintained the loss of nutrients is controlled so such type of practices uh, are important so here there is a model of organic or agriculture where in a lot of uh, different practices are there like crop rotation or conserving biodiversity or use of organic manure or crop residues or green manure so uh, crop rotation uh, there these are different uh, management practicing practices so crop rotation is uh, a planned uh, succession of crops so in which there is a practice of planting different crops sequentially on the same pl uh, plot of land so for example uh, so for example if we have a piece of land here and uh, on uh, in which when we are uh, planting uh, corns and beans uh, one by one so one uh, the corn will uh, you know it takes out the uh, nitrogen content and the beans they are uh, leguminous so they return the uh, uh, nitrogenous content to the land so there can be a uh, complicated way of rotation also like one or maybe there can be a simpler way of rotation also so there are different things one is the two field rotation where one area is being planted and another area is left uh, as fallow and then uh, in the next uh, season it, this uh, thing is reversed then there can be a three field uh, uh, crop rotation pattern which was also practiced in europe so in which what happens during the autumn time what is happening the uh, there is a plantation of rye or wheat kind of thing and then in the spring time we have oats or barley and then the second piece of land the whole land is divided into three parts so the second part is uh, cropped with peas or lentils and the third part is left as fallow so what happens at every 3 years it is ensured that one part of the land remains fallow to re, uh, to regain its fertility and regain its nutrient uh, nutrients again so uh, this is or maybe there can be a four field uh, crop rotation so different ways can be there so what happens in this process if the land is kept fallow for some time it will uh, regain its nutrient uh, value and uh, then the uh, the productivity will be higher in the second one is through the uh, conserving the biodiversity so through rearing diversity of crops and livestock so uh, if there is a market uh, uncertainty or if there is a climatic uh, uncertainty or uh, so then or maybe there are biological risks which are associated with it so uh, uh, then these uh, are uh, the conserving biodiversity aspect can be one of the important thing now in uh, when we talk about the uh, crop rotation the pesticide uh, the use of pesticides can also be scaled uh, up so the integrated pest management uh, concept can be better utilized when we are talking about the crop rotation then the third uh, aspect is use of organic manure so uh, the plants or uh, animal waste uh, or any by product of cattle or poultry manure uh, or maybe composted rice straw or any other crop residue uh, 
when it is applied uniformly across the field. So two or more weeks before being incorporated during land uh, preparation. So uh, manure and uh, organic sources are used to improve the soil fertility. And uh, it provides new micronutrients, uh, which is usually provided by the inorganic fertilizers. Now, the limitations of these uh, organic manures can be they can be bulky, they can they can have a high handling and transport cost, and uh, per unit nutrient the cost can be higher. Availability can be one of the aspect, and uh, since it is applied at the beginning of the crop. So uh, later crop demand may not be met for the nutrients. And also uh, the uh, odor is unpleasant. If we combine organic manure with fertilizers, mm, so uh, which uh, this allows the farmers to uh, use this uh, organic materials or manure. Uh, it is available on farm, the cost is low, and uh, then uh, it uh, can give high returns, uh, yields and profit when it is combined with inorganic fertilizers. So what are the effects of inorganic fertilizer? Also, we uh, know about it uh, and it has been uh, you know, spoken uh, every now and then. But uh, excessive use of chemical fertilizers uh, nowadays are important inputs and what uh, ill effect can it can create, maybe it can uh, so it usually depletes the soil fertility and increases the pollution in surface water bodies. So th these are few of the uh, effects of uh, the implications of inorganic fertilizer. So usually it hinders the immobilization of nutrients. Then uh, rapid rate of nutrient loss, uh, emission of ammonia, methane and other uh, harmful gases. So as a result of denitrification. Then uh, generally the secondary and micronutrients are uh, depleted. So sulfur and zinc along with uh, magnesium, manganese, iron, uh, boron, co um, copper, etc. So it limits the productivity of many crop fields, especially rice. Then uh, fall in crop production uh, because of humus depletion. Then excessive of uh, nitrate pollution can uh, cause serious health hazard. Uh, regular use of phosphatic fertilizers causes the buildup of trace metal contamination, so arsenic uh, contamination or fluoride, cadmium, etc. in soils and plants. And uh, also one of the very important uh, visualization is the eutrophication wherein uh, uh, because of excess of intake of NPK, the algal uh, growth becomes higher for the time being. So there is an algal bloom on the water body. And then uh, the uh, algal bloom is very high, so it becomes like a blanket and it cuts off the air, uh, penetration of air into the deeper layer. So slowly uh, dying up of plant and uh, all the aquatic fauna and flora. So organic manures have their own advantages. Uh, they provide all the nutrients. They help in maintaining the carbon to nitrogen ratio. Physical, chemical, biological properties are improved. Then uh, the structure and the texture of the soil is also in improved. Water holding capacity, biological activity, etc., is enhanced, and the evaporation loss is minimized. Then another important uh, aspect of organic farming is the crop residues. So crop residues are uh, usually uh, whatever is left over. So uh, in uh, different uh, places, it is primarily used as the bedding material for animals and uh, for uh, different purposes like livestock feed or biogas generation uh, for attaching for rural homes or mushroom cultivation. So uh, on farm uh, burns uh, to clean the field for sowing the next crop is has intensified in recent years. So we have all been uh, reading and listening about the uh, burning of the, especially which is called as the parali burning. So uh, burning of crop residues, usually it is higher in Haryana and Punjab and then Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal. So uh, for to uh, minimize the, uh, uh, to the crop residue uh, burning and all. So the national policy for management of crop residue was incorporated in 2014. 
so the major objectives uh, for this uh, npmcr is the first is the control of burning of crop residues uh, so that the degradation is not taking place the loss of soil nutrients is managed and uh, it uh, aspires to promote the in situ management so uh, in cooperation in soil mulching or uh, for use as a domestic fuel or fodder for crop residues then the crop residues can be uh, if it can be diversified for various purposes then capacity building uh, awareness about the ill effects formulation and implementation of suitable law and uh, uh, different technologies promotion so that the uh, crop residues are optimally utilized and there is a in situ management and also promotion of diversified uses of crop crop residues for various purposes for example power generation or as a raw material or uh, utilization for paper uh, or board or panel industry so different manage so different uh, so these are the strategies how uh, the crop residues can be managed uh, and the objectives then uh, we have also green manure where uh, the practice of plowing or turning into the soil uh, the undecomposed green plant tissue for improving the physical structure so it is a supplementary means of adding organic matter and uh, additional nitrogen particularly uh, for leguminous crops so that the leguminous crops uh, are able to they have the capacity to fix the nitrogen from the air so uh, through the leguminous crops the additional nitrogen content can be added and uh, the green manures do not break down in the soil so quickly but uh, they add some nutrient to the soil for the next crop next cropping season so uh, now uh, uh, more recently uh, scientists and uh, uh, planners have uh, acknowledged that the there has to be a compromise between the crop uh, production and a uh, maintaining the nutrient value so uh, organic agriculture is usually uh, emerging as an alternative so uh, to the conventional agriculture now uh, now the emphasis is that uh, we have to maintain the soil's uh, natural condition by minimizing the disturbance uh, when the crops are grown so uh, fertilizers can accordingly be uh, managed and uh, very close regulation of fertilizers also has to be uh, there so uh, with this we come to uh, a brief uh, description of the different soil types in india so these are the different soil types uh, as uh, recommended by the indian council of agricultural research so it uh, the different soils in india have been divided uh, into this group so we have alluvial black red laterite forest uh, arid saline and uh, pt uh, soil so uh, alluvial soil is uh, the one which is being derived from the uh, river bed uh, and its bank so the river bed uh, the the uh, materials which are there uh, is called as alluvium so if it is derived from alluvium it is called as the uh, alluvial soil and uh, it is the most important soil group of india so usually uh, supports a large variety of crops uh, rice wheat sugarcane jute potato lots of vegetables although it is deficient in nitrogen phosphorus and humus but usually it is uh, it covers the satluj ganga brahmaputra tract so from punjab to assam uh, the valleys uh, tapti mahanadi all wherever the rivers are flowing uh, that is your uh, alluvial soil then we have the black soil so uh, black soils are usually uh, derived from uh, the basaltic rocks usually under the semi arid condition so uh, through, uh, because of the solidification of lava so if there is a volcanic eruption and when it is uh, solidifying cooling after and then solidifying so uh, it forms because of the uh, uh, cooling effect the solidification of lava so known as regur and usually found in the deccan trap region of the maharashtra and then madhya pradesh 
and uh, Andhra Pradesh, northern part of Karnataka, Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, and Rajasthan. So uh, usually two types of parental rocks are there, the Deccan and the Rajmahal trap. Uh, and uh, it consists of the ferruginous gneisses and cysts. It is a geological term. So uh, through this. Then we have uh, red uh, soil. So red soil are uh, red soil is uh, reddish uh, in uh, to brownish in color, and it is uh, uh, obtained from the weathering of uh, rocks which are granite. Gneiss is a metamorphic rock, and crystalline rocks. So uh, they are occupying approximately twenty nine percent of the total soil cover of air of uh, soil cover of India. And uh, they uh, are distributed in these uh, falling states, uh, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra, some part of it, you can see it here on the slide. So uh, red soils are uh, red in color because of uh, the coatings of ferric oxide. So uh, and texture is uh, loamy to clay. Uh, they are ideal for cultivation of ragi or groundnuts and uh, slightly acidic there is a poor quantity of phosphorus nitrogen and organic contents then uh, we have lateritic soil uh, usually found in tropical countries so wherever there is an alternative wet and dry climatic condition so heavy rainfall condition and uh, high temperature so uh, the oxides of iron and aluminium uh, with the heavy rainfall it leaches down uh, 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 in, into the soil and uh, the top soil is completely devoid uh, in the oxides of iron and uh, aluminium. So uh, the soil where it is accumulating it is uh, known as the electritic soil. Then the arid and desert soil, uh, semi-arid and arid region, uh, they are poor in nitrogen and humus, mountain soils, usually found in the mountainous terrain, the Himalayan terrain. Then alkaline and saline soils, which are uh, in the states of Rajasthan, Punjab, Uttar Pradesh, Haryana, Gujarat, and Maharashtra. Are, these soils are not uh, ideal for cultivation. They are infertile, and uh, they generally grade in texture from sandy to loamy sand. Then we have peaty soil, which is occurring in hot and humid condition. Uh, as a result of uh, as a result of a large amount of organic matter getting accumulated and uh, they are black heavy and highly acidic with large amount of soluble salts uh, they are dark in color also uh, with a uh, lot of uh, organic matter so uh, this is about the uh, types of soils in india and uh, the management of uh, different practices which are usually adopted in the management thank you